Hey, buddy. What you doing? I've done it. I've finally done it. I have constructed the beverage of everlasting happiness. Oh, well, sounds good. It smells awful. <coughs> What's in it? Well, all the things that make me happy. Cherry soda, orange juice, that cream that's inside that one kind of donut that I really like, Cheeto dust, and essence of ketchup. <laughs> what about reading your Bible and praying? Those things make you happy. Well, yeah, but those don't taste like anything. The one time I did accidentally lick my Bible. Don't ask, it wasn't good. Now watch as I experience everlasting happiness in one sip. Are you happy? I'm gonna be sick. And I'm Jay. Welcome to Press Play. I don't get it, Emma. I put together all the good stuff and it made something extra not good. Well, I guess science experiments are called experiments for a reason. Yeah, I, mean, I guess so. Okay, quick. If you could do a science experiment to solve any problem, what would it be? How about you guys? Uh, I know. That smell that happens when you open a package of beef oh, jerky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 I know. I'd create a coating for my whole mouth so that I could eat cookies straight out of the oven without getting burned. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good one. Imagine being in a real lab where stuff was being created and problem solved. You thinking what I'm thinking? Yes. I need to add a pinch of cinnamon sugar to my everlasting happiness concoction. No. All right. Let's do it. Three, Three two, two, one, press play. play. Whoa! Ooh, real science lab. Oh, yeah. Looks kind of weird though, doesn't it? Weird is my science of choice, young man. Whoa. The name is Dr. Marigold Pfefferson. Scientist, science enthusiast, science aficionado, and mini golf champion. Oh, uh, hello, Dr. Pfefferson. Dr. Pfefferson. Right, I'm Jay. And I'm Emma. This is so cool. What kind of weird stuff are you doing here? Well, Emma, that brewing serum right before your eyes is a little brother or a little sister solution. Just a single drop of any of your things, your phone, your video games, your books, your diary, your DIY home chemistry set, whatever. It will make them immediately interested in something else besides, well, you know, your stuff. <laughs> wow, useful. And weird. Don't forget weird. Weird <laughs> is of the utmost importance here. Ooh, do you have anything for healing paper cuts? I got one from a Cheeto bag. It was awful. Oh, you are getting into the science of healing there. That's not really my area. Weird serums that help do remotely helpful things. That's more my area. Healing paper cuts, eh, not so much. Oh, but there is a Bible story about that though. It comes from Luke chapter seven. Nice. So, Jesus was traveling along when he was presented with a very big problem that needed a solution. So a Roman general, kind of an important person, had a servant that was sick. He cared for his servant very much and had heard about Jesus's power to heal. So generally speaking, Roman generals weren't super popular among the Jewish people. I mean, after all, the Jewish people were being forced to live on the Roman rule. But this Roman general treated everybody with kindness, so people really liked him. So those he had sent to Jesus to tell of the situation told Jesus how cool the Roman general was. And they pleaded with Jesus to heal the man's servant. Jesus agreed and headed that way. But then, something scientifically bamboozling happened. What? What was so bum? Bam ba 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 the Roman officials sent more friends to Jesus to tell him in Luke 7, 6, and 7, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. Wow, he didn't even want Jesus to come? Well, he knew that Jesus' power to heal was so great that he didn't even need to be there. 
Jesus could just say the word from where he was and his servant would be A-OK. -okay. Wow, that is bamboozling. And that's what Jesus thought. Jesus saw the chemistry happening in this man's faith. And basically, he saw him reacting to Jesus and believing in him too. When the messengers returned to the Roman general's house, they found the servant was healed. Jesus had done it. He didn't even have to be there. He just said the word from where he was and the man was well. If they didn't know before, then they know now. Wow, Jesus has the power to heal. Oh, we gotta go. See you later, Dr. Filling Station. Feffa Filson, right? Bye, Dr. Feffa Filson. Thanks for having us in your lab and for the story. Feffa Filson, you are scientifically welcome. Uh, secret handshake time? Oh, yeah. Turn to your neighbors and join in. <laughs> Brrr, woo! Where are you headed? Home. Dr. Fee-Fi-Fo-Fum gave me some of this little sister solution, and I'm gonna put it everywhere. <laughs> anyway, to recap while Jay runs around, we pressed play and found ourselves in Dr. Feffa Filson's lab. She was cool, but she didn't make anything for healing. But she told us a story about how Jesus healed a man's servant without even being there. He just said the word from a distance and the man was well again. Wow, Jesus has the power to heal. How can you believe in the healing power of Jesus today, like the Roman official did in the story? Back so soon? Well, I broke it on the way. It's all good, my little sis is actually pretty cool. Oh, that's the spirit, Jay. You know what time it is. Time to drop, drop the, the verse. verse. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drop the verse. Oh, drop it. Here we go, here we go, get your Bibles out. Here we go when the scripture is in your hands of strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. First Chronicles 29 12. First Chronicles 29 12. Oh! In your hands of strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. First Chronicles 29 12. First Chronicles 29 12. <laughs> In your hands of strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. First Chronicles 29 12. First Chronicles 29 12. What? 